We don't tell when we felt like quitting. We don't tell when we felt like giving up. We don't tell when we're in the story how it felt when we felt like all our odds were against us. Just so appreciative of you uh, continually always being ready instant in season and out of season to pray. You know, a praying man is able to overcome so many things. You know, as I was talking with our speaker last night, betting him uh, to come out and, and to share a word with uh, with you guys this morning, um, we talked about, the, and he, he quizzed me, I mean, extensively on quitting and what what's the process of what, what, what keeps you moving forward and stops you from quitting. And this morning in my, uh, my quiet time with the Lord, he dropped in my spirit, winning is simply not quitting. If you don't quit, you continue. Les Brown says, it ain't over until you win. So we are at that point right now where the decisions we make will determine whether or not we win. So this morning is our honor, privilege, and I promise you it's going to be a pleasure listening to this young man. Now, the last time I saw him, his beard wasn't as luxurious, but now he's discovered berries and juices, and he's um, he's going to share with us how we can find the peace of God and use that as a barometer to be able to make better decisions. Wendell, are you there? Hey, listen, guys, I won't be long, but I'll, I'll be strong, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to move through this thing kind of quickly because I want to be respectful of the time. I know you got up doing your push-ups and your meditations and your prayers this morning. So I want to make sure if you didn't get a chance to do that, I want to make sure that you can get back to that. As uh, Dr. Max said, my name is Wendell Graham, and I'm originally from the beautiful city of Mobile, Alabama. Now I'm on travel. I'm in a hotel. So hopefully the lighting is uh, decent here and you can see. And uh, when I got the invitation, when I got the call, to be on the men's prayer call. I, I said, you know what, I, I, I got to do it. I want to do it. And so Dr. Sacconi Prince invited me on and, uh, and I, I had to say yes. So uh, today we're talking about decisiveness. But let me, uh, let me share this with you. Uh, there was this lady, uh, she was having a terrible dream. She was having a nightmare. I'm talking about she was kicking and, and, and she was sweating in her sleep and she was having a nightmare. And the dream was that there was a monster chasing her. Now this monster was chasing, it was a ghoulish creature that was chasing her and he was getting closer and closer and closer. And, and a lady was running and she was tired in her dream and physically she was tired. And finally, the lady just fell down on the ground and turned over and she looked at the monster and she said, all right, what are you gonna do now? And the monster looked at her kind of puzzled and, and scratched his head and he said, I don't know lady, this is your dream. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to—I ask you a question this morning. Life is a dream. This is your life. And what are the decisions that you're making in your life? What decisions have you made? I got, I got a question now. Don't leave me out here by myself. I got a question for you. Is there anyone on this line, on this Zoom, on this call this morning that's ever made a bad decision? Has there anyone that's ever made by a show of hands that, come on now, I need to see the hands. I don't want to be by myself. Somebody raised two hands. I see somebody got a foot up. Okay, you made some real bad decisions. So life is about making decisions. Life is about making decisions. Now, I got a few notes. They say, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Um, there was this guy that I knew by the name of Mitch. He said that, he said, you can decide or I can decide, but a decision will be made. The Bible teaches us that a wavering minded man is unstable in some of his ways. Now I read it in the book. It's in the book, unless you tore it out. Did I quote that right? That a wavering minded man is unstable in some of his ways, uh, most of his ways, a few of his ways. But the Bible talks to us and it says that a wavering minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And sometimes in life, we vacillate. How long will you waver between two decisions? How long? What are the ingredients that we use in order to make a good decision? You know, there was a time people used to ask me, how is the weather where you are? How's the weather? And I would tell them that I have partly cloudy skies. The winds are coming from the east and the barometer meter is steadily rising. Now, what is a barometer? 
a barometer is a scientific device that's used to measure the pressure in a room and it measure and the clouds bill and it causes one of two things it either causes snow or rain because the pressure builds and when those clouds get heavy the rain begins to fall so the the barometer is a measuring tool that's designed to measure the pressure in your life so as men on a men's prayer call I wanna ask you a question. How are you measuring the pressure that's building up in your life? And what are the decisions? What decisions are you making to do something about it? As Johnny Mack said last night, Dr. Johnny Mack said last night, we had an amazing call. And Dr. Mack, raise your hand if I can use just a, just a snippet of that conversation from last night. He was exactly right, ladies and gentlemen. He was exactly right. We talked on the phone and I had, I just got in and I just got settled in and I, and the phone rang and, and, and we began to talk and the conversation went a little bit, something like this. I'm just going to give you some brief insert, uh, excerpts. I asked him a question. Uh, he, he, he began to share with me and pour into me and we just began to catch up on, on some lost time. And we talked about uh, uh, some of the decisions that he's made. He said he had a lofty, some, a lofty aspiration. He said that, and I'm going to use a little bit of literary, literary licensing here to tell this part of it, but he said, you know what? I had some lofty aspirations. I was sitting there one day minding my own business, and out of nowhere, like it came from somewhere else, uh, it, it said that I wanted to uh, 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 write 100 books. I believe that's what it was, write 100 books. And he said, man, he said, you know what? That thing just came over me out of nowhere. And I said, really? And he said, you know what? God is amazing because since that time, I think it was, uh, I, I was able to write over 24 books. I was able to write over 24 books, but I was able to help over 400 people. Now he's got my full undivided attention. Now, you know, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat trying to listen to the rest of this story. And he said, uh, he said, but, and I said, but have you made any bad decisions? Did anything ever go wrong? And then I heard him throw his phone. And then I had to wait when I asked him that question, because he had to walk across the room and pick up his phone. He said, have I ever made some bad decisions? He said, man, let me tell you something. He said, I made a decision to publish, to, uh, to print over a thousand books. He said, when I printed those thousand books, he said, the, the publishing was subpar, the editing was subpar, the graphics was off. And he said, you know, it wasn't a good experience. He said, I may have lost a few friends. I may have ruined a few relationships. He said, but you know what? It, you know, life happens. And I said, uh, Dr. Mack, let me ask you a question. I said, I, I would have uh, given you an excuse to quit. You know, your face is bad. People are talking about you. I, I would have given you an excuse to just throw in the towel. Why didn't you quit? I would have given you a pass. You could have went into the witness protection program at that point. And he said, he paused for a minute and he said, I didn't quit because I believed I could do it. And it was like fire shut up in my bones. I believe that it, it was referred to as Jeremiah having fire shut up in his bones. Dr. Max said, I didn't quit because I believed I could do it. And something on the inside was pushing me and driving me and propelling me forward. Dr. Max said he had a decision to make. He could decide to quit or he could decide to move forward. And he shared with me that he's working with someone and he's helping that person with their book even today. Now, this is my point. He shared that with me. He thought that he was just talking, calling a true to fact. He thought that he was just talking and, uh, just to pass the time. I don't know, but he called to drop something in my spirit. He did, he, he flipped the script. Y'all ever had anybody flip the script on you? You, you know, you questioned them, but he, he gonna ask you a question. So he threw it back on me. And he said, Dr. Graham, he said, what keeps you going? What keeps you moving forward in the, in the face of adversity, in the face of people looking at you, the smiles and the laughs? And I shared this with him. See, men, we sometimes hide. Yeah, we do. We hide. And sometimes we hide behind our, the good part of our story. We, we tell the story so fast that I grew up in poverty and that I, that, I, that I never matriculated through the upper echelons of the university. I dropped out in the second grade and I worked in the field all my life. And then uh, now I live in this 
beautiful 10,000 square foot home and I got mom, I got enough money to burn a wet mule and still have enough left over. We tell the story from that perspective. We don't tell when we felt like quitting. We don't tell when we felt like giving up. We don't tell when we're in the story how it felt when we felt like all our odds were against us. And I shared with him that I'm going through a challenge right now. It's a challenge, you know, and, and I kept getting no, no after no after no. And my son, who was getting some of my emails, saw the no's coming to his email because my email wasn't working at the time. And I sent it to his email. And he said, Dad, I'm sorry you're having to go through this. And I was shocked. I was like, what? Me going through what? He said, you know, you're getting all of these no's. And I said, son, no, 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 no. No just means next opportunity. See, I'm glad when a rascal give me a no because we're so negative. People are gonna give you no after no after no because we're conditioned to say no. But you have to decide using, what, what do we have to use? We have to use the peace of God as the indicator in decision-making. We have to use the peace of God. If you don't, the Bible says that you have to have a peace that surpasses some of the understanding. You see, I'm playing with these words. It surpasses all understanding. People don't understand that when it looks like the world is caving in on you, that you got a smile on your face, that you can say that you're doing wonderful. I understand that this is my life. I understand that the words out of my mouth will either issue life or death. So I'm going to speak into the existence those things that I want. I say, son, I'm glad when people get the no out the way. That means it opens up the door for the next opportunity. So for many of us who are facing challenges in our life right now, for many of us who have been told no, for many of us who the doors have been closed, for many of us who people are talking about us in front of our face and behind our backs, you know, we have to make a decision that we're going to keep on using the peace of God as our barometer. I remember when I was on the men's prayer call, call last time, and I love uh, Elijah in the Bible. I love talking about Elijah because Elijah made a decision that when Jezebel was going to kill him, he made a decision to stick around or to leave town. Y'all know that? <laughs> he, had, he had a decision. But you see, Elijah left off a rumor. See, Jezebel didn't come to him personally and tell him. They, the, word, the word on the street, the word on the street, Elijah, Elijah let me tell you that word on the street. Jezebel gonna do you something. She gonna kill you for those down in New Orleans. They, they say they gonna, she gonna do you something. So Elijah struck out on foot. And then Elijah found himself, where did he find himself? By a stream during a famine. And the Bible says that the ravens gave Elijah sandwiches from heaven. Now I didn't say that, but I'm using my own interpretation. It said that bread and meat during the, during the famine, the ravens brought Elijah. And they brought him this, this food during a famine. But Elijah made another decision that when the stream dried up during the famine, he found himself in a widow woman's home. And there he had another decision. The lady said, I'm about to make these cakes and me and my son going to eat our last meal and we're going to die. That's what she was talking about. And Elijah said he had to make another decision. Elijah said, I'm deciding that you give me the first cake, pancake, and y'all figure the rest out. <laughs> he had another decision to make. So Elijah uh, uh, was able to reach down into that barrel and keep pulling out of what looked like the odds were stacked against him. Y'all remember that part uh, uh, in the Bible where the widow woman's son died and Elijah took his cloak and he decided to put the cloak over the lady, I mean, over the little boy and the boy came back to life. But then Elijah, he, he decided to leave again. But listen, this part, Elijah found himself in a cave, in a cold, dark cave. And Elijah was expecting God to show up, as God does, as God, as, as Elijah expected him to. He was thinking that God was going to show up in, in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in the clouds, in the thunder. So Elijah in this cold, dark cave, and, and, and every time it thundered, he ran out. And he looked, and God wasn't in the thunder. And he thought God was going to show up in the fire. And God didn't show up in the fire. And here he is, this man who called God to, 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 to send down fire from heaven to destroy the false idols. He finds himself in a cave, a cold, dark cave. And, and Elijah expecting God to show up. And then finally, God shows up in, a, in the cool of the day, in a calm, whispering voice. And he asks Elijah a question. 
He said, Elijah, Elijah, what are you doing in this cave? After all that I've done for you, how did you end up here? What are you doing here? Why did you decide to isolate yourself? Why did you decide to run? Why did you decide to hide? After all that I've done for you, how did you decide this for your life? And brothers, as I make my way to dismount, I wanna ask you a question. How did you decide to sit on your gift, your talents, your abilities, after all that God has done for you? I know what he's done for you because he's done it for me. I know what he's done. He, I know, I, okay, you thought you were gonna lose that house. I get personal. You thought you were gonna lose that house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you thought that the doctor's report that you got, it was gonna stick, but God, God saw fit for it to be another way. You didn't think you were gonna get that job. You never thought that you were gonna start that business. You never thought that you were gonna get married. You never thought you were gonna have kids, but God, but God, but God. How did you end up? How did you decide that this cave was the place for you? What are the decisions that you're making for your life? So I propose to you this morning, as I prepare to turn the mic back over, that you do an evaluation. Dr. Johnny Mack said it. He said, I was gonna quit. I was gonna fold. I was gonna give up. He said, but it was like fire shut up in my bones and I believed that I could do it. So I decided to get up off my stuff and put my, put, throw my hat back in the ring. What are the decisions that you're making for your life? If you're gonna fall, if you're gonna give up, if you're gonna quit, if you're gonna bend, think about all of the things that God has done for you and make a bold decision. I believe I can do it. Uh, uh, there was a songwriter said he believed that he could fly. Now, I wouldn't suggest that he get on top of the uh, Empire State Building and jump, but he believed that he could fly. What do you believe that can happen for your life? And listen, let me tell you, let me share this with you. If you don't believe that it can happen for your life, I'm going to suggest that you do this thing. I want you to get with somebody, who, somebody whose belief in you is stronger than your belief in yourself and lean on them. Lean on them until your belief is strong enough in yourself that you can do that thing. Don't rely on your own belief in yourself all the time. The Bible teaches us to seek not the counsel of the ungodly. Some of us are looking for the right advice from the wrong people. The Bible said that you should vet these people and get the right information from the right people. The Bible teaches us, they see it's a formula. The Bible would teach us how to be in line with those blessings that God has in store for us. Seek not that counsel. So a lot of times, just because a person has a beautiful Facebook page and an Instagram and they're driving around and wearing a nice suit, you think just because you give them $10,000 that they're going to take you to the mountaintop, but they're going to leave you in poverty because everybody's intentions aren't the same. You realize that most people who do right for you do going to do right for you. They don't even ask you for no money. They See, Dr. Johnny Mack was dropping gems so fast that I couldn't even pick them up fast enough. And that's how it is. When you get around the right people, they're going to tell you the right thing. And they don't even know that they're doing it. Uh, uh, it, it, it. It comes from a different place in them. They do it. The law of reciprocity, that you reap what you sow, they're just planting seeds. And they're not responsible because that seed has to be in, in minerally rich soil. And it has to have the light of the sun 93 million miles away. And it has to be delicately balanced with water and sunlight. And then after the course of time, that seed, insignificant thing that looks like a rock, it bursts open and a root goes down and a shoot goes up to kiss the sun. And the only thing that you've done is planted that seed. So ladies and gentlemen, as I turn the mic back over at 24 minutes after the hour, I just wanna leave you with this, that you can decide or I can decide, but guess what? A decision will be made. Thank you so much. For listening. Amen. Amen. Dr. Graham, we appreciate that. Uh, gentlemen, in our recap, well, I'll make it real simple. Um, uh, the question was posed by Mr. Wendell How long will you uh, take uh, or how long would you waver between your decision making? Uh, how are you measuring the pressure in your lives? All of this is predicated on the, the question of are we making good decisions? 
and uh, our ability to be decisive in those moments when it's critical for us as we're leading our lives, leading our families, leading our situation, our ministries, and how do we go into the next season of our lives? And, and the question on that is that, you know, when I thought about the pressure that you posed over there, I thought about the positive attributes of pressure, that that is a good thing. Sometimes we got to put that pressure on us to get us to move to the next situation. You know, pressure um, actually makes us better because when you know, when you have the, when, when you, that pressure, when you have a need, sometimes you can come up with some great ideas. They say that the, the, the necessity is the, the mother of all inventions, right? Sometimes we need it. So sometimes God allow us to get in those, in those situations where that pressure is built up to then push us into a decision making, right? So that might be a part in your life that, that God is making you uh, feel this pressure so you can make a move. The other part of it is that that pressure can make us uh, engage in life more intently. Sometimes we're walking around, gentlemen, men of God, that we're on surface level at best, that we're walking around here and we're not even looking at and absorbing how many blessings that we have. We become so, uh, what's the word, J-Mac, um, privileged that sometimes it, 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 we're just used to it. Y'all remember when we used to have to hustle and, and we was wondering how to put the, these tools and fuse together to get it? Sometimes now we sitting over here in our big old houses and we got food bursting out our refrigerators. Remember the times when we, we didn't have anything, when your prayer for, for your daily bread was really intense? You know, you get down on your knee like what the deacons used to do back in the day. And you're like, ah, love and love. You know, you remember that time when you got into that thing. Now we're blowing it off because we're so accustomed to get it. But what happens when when you you engage in life, when that when the pressure has you looking at stuff and you're more impacted by what's going on? There's an, an intensity that we have to live in. There is a uh, an appreciation that sometimes that we can negate because we're just used to things. And lastly, one of the benefits of pressure is that it helps refine our character, right? Back in the day, I used to be one decision away, away from the strip club. You see what I'm saying? You know, if, if that bill don't get paid, that money don't come in, I might have to start stripping. I think there's a Christian uh, strip club. You think that right, Reggie? I don't know. But I was one decision away from some very bad decision making. And what happens is when that pressure comes in our life, it helps refine us. It helps us bring us into a, a level where our character means something because it has to match up with our calling. And so in these moments when you're going through this in your decision making, you can look at that and see what's going on. Dr. Graham says this, uh, peace of God is an indicator of things of, of what we're going through. Do you have peace through it? You know, when one when man offers you a no on one side, does that no? And J. Mac, Dr. Graham, if you don't know this, he loves his acronym. I came up with one. If man offers you a no, can that no mean the next opportunity that you have for God's blessing. So it might not be one, a man closes one door, but it's the next opportunity for God to do something great in your life. And so we have to have a decision making to say, regardless of what I'm going through, I'm following God. Regardless of what I'm going through, I'm still going to be a man of character. Regardless of what I'm going through, I will still trust in the Lord, right? Because we all have been given a, given a measure of, of faith. But sometimes in there, we have to add our measure of belief in there as well. You know, so we have to believe in that thing to, to fuel that faith that we have. So we're, we're in these moments, gentlemen, that life is going to be tough for us. We're going to have some obstacles that come in our way and we have to be decisive in our thoughts. And at the end of the day, we always got to choose with God's way. And we got to do it with a level of integrity that keeps us, um, keeps our witness and make sure that we stand firm in what we do and what we believe. So people are looking at us in the sphere of influence. Why, like you said, Dr. Graham, your son said he was looking at all those no's. And what you, what we got to make sure we, we understand is that he was looking at how you were going to move through these no's. And you move with a level of integrity. You move with a level of belief that so seeds into his spirit. So now he sees the example. And gentlemen, I guarantee you that we have a bunch of people looking at us while we go through adversity to see how we're going to stand. So with that being said...